as you can tell, I grew up in Australia, Perth, Western Australia, and uh, as a child, uh, it was a very fortunate life. We were full of sand and sun, and we grew up, as you can tell from this photograph of my birthday party as a six-year-old, that we were tanned, we were fit, we were full of life, and we were full of cake. <laughs> and, now, not, not long after this, um, maybe five or six weeks later, um, Pete, who was my best friend and I, um, were in our tree house, uh, a fort that we occupied regularly on Saturday and Sunday afternoons. And we had a very important responsibility, both in the district and at a global level, which was to fend off intergalactic uh, forces. <laughs> and we did this with gum nuts, um, which we used to, to throw back at these adversaries. And uh, we took this responsibility quite seriously, and I'm not certain of the consequences if we had not been there, but uh, one, one, particular, one particular afternoon, uh, a balmy Sunday afternoon, Pete reached out to me and uh, took my hand, and he put it on his, on his neck, and he said, I felt these lumps in my neck, and uh, he had uh, developed uh, lymph node infiltration with a type of uh, leukemia, and uh, not long after, uh, Pete actually uh, passed away from a form of childhood leukemia. Now, uh, at the time, everybody told me you have to accept this, and uh, as a child, I, I found it quite unacceptable. There was this uh, best mate of mine who was full of life, and as you can see, full of cake, and now he was no more. Time passed, and uh, my mother died of cancer, and I was at the gas station, and the attendant said to me, your mother can't have died of cancer, she was too young. And the last time I'd seen her, she was doing her yoga exercises in the kitchen, and there wasn't a wrinkle on her, and she was just getting into her stride in her life. Now, a year after that, my father died of cancer. Now, why, why am I telling you this story? Well, it's because in each case, people told me this is something you must accept. You have to accept this. And in each case, I found it quite unacceptable that people should have to die like this when they were so full of life. So the uh, proposition for today is part of the American dream, reinventing the American dream, that there is a fundamental uh, inalienable right to a full healthy life. Now, there are a number of different uh, ideas about where inalienable rights began, um, but certainly the Middle Ages and late antiquity were the origin of these ideas. And it was Thomas Jefferson who, I think, cleverly and appropriately replaced this notion of a pursuit of happiness to list amongst the other key self-evident inalienable rights, the truths that all men are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and the pursuit of happiness was added to life, liberty. Now, it's my view that the pursuit of any of these inalienable rights is critically dependent upon being healthy. It is impossible to pursue liberty if you're sick, it's impossible to pursue happiness if you're sick, and it's impossible to pursue life if you're dead. So really, this is a, a concept which uh, is not part of the mainstream thinking. In some ways, it's a revolutionary idea. But I believe this idea has come of time. There are key elements to any revolution, whether it begins slowly or whether it happens fast. And the key elements are the seed of an idea, a people of a particular nature to carry that idea. And then there are technological and economic changes that have taken place, which enable the revolution to take place. And I believe that the American people, the nurturing of this idea by the American people will make this a real revolution. And there are certain characteristics of the people in this country and the global diaspora that feeds on it. And they are that we are a diverse population, that we are enabled, we're extroverted. But the most important part of this is we are a culture that has an inalienable right to choose we believe we have the right to choose. We don't do necessarily just what we're told. So there has been substantial technological progress in health. And I'm going to focus a little bit on some of the advances in cancer, as that's the field I'm most familiar with. 
there have been advances in targeting the gene mutations that occur in cancer, targeted therapies, major advances that have revolutionised the treatment of cancer. Secondly, there are new approaches to treating stem cells, cancer stem cells. And thirdly, there's a new understanding of the forces that make us pursue illness behaviour. So this is one example, um, if I may, of a slide showing the treatment of a patient with melanoma. And on the left hand side, this image depicts the metastatic lesions. And here you can see after two weeks of treatment, the dramatic reduction in the tumour burden using a targeted therapy. Similarly, you can see the patient's disease here under the skin after 15 weeks of treatment, dramatic remission in the disease. Now there are cultural forces that make us sick in our country and throughout the globe. I wanted to give you one example because in Africa there is a very high infant and maternal mortality. And when a woman dies in childbirth, they're told you have to accept this, that this is due to witchcraft or evil forces or something a woman had done in her past. But we know that a very substantial number of these deaths the maternal and infant deaths that occur are due to genital mutilation. And this slide depicts the frequency, the prevalence of female genital mutilation in African countries. And you can see the prevalence is some 90% in several of these countries. So people are taught that this is the way it, things are. Female genital mutilation is accepted, it's a cultural norm, and it has dramatic effects on life in this country. There are cultural forces in this country making us sick. And I show in this slide an example. Tobacco advertising, $8.4 billion is spent annually. Whereas in contrast, the federal government cancer research is only $4.8 billion. So there are dramatic, well-funded forces making us sick in this country. And the targeting of advertising for tobacco is specifically to the poor and it's targeting younger women. Now if we look at the next decade, as part of this dream we're talking about today, there are substantial new technological advances that will occur. And I'll focus just on a couple of examples because I think it's very exciting for everyone in this room and for every patient who may be watching this video. And I think, importantly, we need to embrace much of what we've forgotten. In this regard, holistic care. Secondly, I think it's very important for us to have everyone accessing health care, what I refer to as a fair care share model. Thirdly, um, it turns out that cancer has a GPS, a global positioning system, and by blocking that, it's possible for patients to live with their cancer. And finally, I wanted to suggest some examples of financial space to help provide a solution to these problems. Many of you may not be aware, but the human body has a well-documented ability to heal itself of cancer. I've listed on this slide examples of types of cancer where there are well-documented examples of spontaneous remission. That's to say the patient has this cancer and their own body without treatment is able to induce a complete remission of the disease, spontaneous remission. Now the diseases are melanoma, neuroblastoma, renal cell, carcinoma and choriocarcinoma. Now these examples tell us that the human body has the ability to fight and eradicate cancer. We need to understand how it does that. We need to be able to mobilize that force as a way of becoming a healthy people. We've forgotten a great deal about what we once knew. This is Otzi, 5,300 year old corpse that was pulled out of the Alps. This individual, when he was brought out of the ice, was covered with what we now know are the acupuncture sites, the meridians, the chakra, the sites that are currently used in acupuncture treatment. He carried with him acupuncture needles and herbs of medicinal nature. This is 5,300 years ago, and I would posit there's a great deal more that we knew that we've forgotten, and it's time to remember it. Now, on this slide, I just give one example of the importance of holistic care. In Western culture, we're very focused on the immediate future. In Eastern culture, there's more of a focus on the long term 
and the past. And it's my belief that a long-term healthy country is going to be dependent upon understanding and integrating this and many other perspectives of Eastern culture. Well, I do believe that health is an inalienable right for all Americans. And part of the solution then is to ensure that all Americans have access to health care. And at this time, there are higher death rates, and this slide shows you the higher death rates amongst uh, African American men and women compared to their white counterparts. So this is the age adjusted cancer mortality rate per 100,000 uh, in America. And if we look at the spending on cancer treatment in people over the age of 65, there's an age adjusted a greater amount of funds spent on whites than blacks. So that's a tremendous opportunity for us to distribute more fairly the uh, access to health care in this country. Now, we've all become increasingly dependent upon GPS. I couldn't have got here without one. Uh, most people can't find their fridge without one. But um, cancer has a GPS. And I think it's very important for us to, to know this, that the cancer spreads to the bones and the brain, and it has a system that sends it there. We spent many years in my laboratory identifying the mechanisms that drive a cancer to those sites which ultimately kill the patient. And it turns out serendipitously that the GPS of many cancers, in particular breast and prostate cancer, is the HIV receptor. Who would have guessed? But if one uses these HIV receptor blocking drugs in an animal model, one can block the spread of cancer. So this slide depicts in the upper panel, mice that have received breast cancer, and in the blue, you can see where the cancer has spread to the lungs over a period of time. In the bottom panel, these animals have been treated with an HIV receptor blocker, which blocks completely the spread of the disease to the lungs, a dramatic effect. So this gives us an opportunity to think differently about cancer, that this diagnosis of cancer is much like perhaps the diagnosis of diabetes, that this is a disease that people can live a health, healthy and full life with. Now, if we look at the way in which either our federal government or we as individuals spend our money, there's an opportunity for us to reshape a healthy America. This is an example of the uh, money that uh, our federal government spends on, on defence and the amount we spend on our health research. We've never known more about what kills us than we do today, and this has been through medical research. The impact that we've had on cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's and cancer has been a function of a very focused effort of biomedical research in this country and its collaborators and other inventors around the world. But if we look at the way we spend our own money, this is a contrast of the amount of money spent on Nintendo Wii, uh, 7.5 billion, compared to the National Cancer Research Budget. So I would suggest we can't abdicate responsibility of the federal government for this. We as individuals have an opportunity to spend our money in a way in which we ensure that we and our families have a healthy life. So where do we go from here? I think that the key dream that I have is that we understand that this is a right. We have the right to a full and healthy life. We can practice a healthy culture with a diet and appropriate exercise, but everything we do can be done in a more healthy way. We can influence the federal government. They do listen to us. That's one of the great things about this country. And we can demand medical research, insist that medical research is grown in this country. And we can insist on the integration of both Western and Eastern culture in the way in which our health is managed by healthcare providers. Well, it's my view that we have a unique and inalienable right to a healthy life. Uh, it is my dream that it is an inalienable right for all Americans to have a full and healthy life. I said that. Uh, I'll let you be in my dreams if you can be in mine. Bob Dylan said that. And strike while the iron is hot. And if it is not hot, strike to make it so. Oliver Cromwell said that. Thank you.